In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, we want to model uh, this parametric uh, surface loft with a graph mapper. So I'm going to teach you how to use a graph mapper to simply produce these circles. Uh, you can see that I can change the length, change the scale of the circles, which I'm going to explain later in the tutorial, and also the number of those circles if we want to change it. You can see by changing the graph mapper, I can simply uh, produce another surface easily we can put the scale a little bit down and you can see how easy it is to produce a series of surfaces so you can always use that uh, graph mapper to control the surface uh, you want to get from the loft okay let's get started from uh, scratch okay if you're new to grasshopper uh, welcome to our channel and consider subscribing because we're going to give you daily tutorials on Grasshopper. And also, if you want to learn more about Grasshopper, we have more lessons, which have more techniques and more plugins we uh, talk about in the course section. You can check out uh, our course from paracourse.com. Okay, let's go and start from scratch. Uh, first of all, what we want to do is to go to this curve section and make a line by using the line STL. That means a start, a direction, which we want to do. So the point is the start, the direction, and then it's going to be the length. So the STL is really great to make the backbone uh, of the lofting surface. Let's just uh, put it up here. And you can just right click on the start, extract and you will have the start point so let's just right click again and set a point so you can see it's going to define a point here which we can move easily uh, the direction by default is like 0, 0, 001 which is in the z direction that is exactly what we want and the length is easily done by just typing maybe we want a length from 2 to maybe 25 with two decimals okay let's just connect that to the length and you can see that we can define the length of this line. Okay, uh, to control those circles I'm going to go to the curve and divide this line by using this divide curve tool uh, from the curve menu to divide it into points. So I'm just going to connect that to the line and let's just say from 3 to maybe 30. Again delete the number slider title so when you connect it to the count it's going to name count. So now you can see that we're going to define the location of those circles we want to control. Uh, the next part is to connect a curved circle to that part. So it's going to be easy. I'm going to just connect that, that point to the circle. But remember, the input is plane. okay? But if you connect a point to a plane, what's going to happen is that it's going to think that the plane is in XY plane. Okay, so remember, if you connect a point to a plane, so you can see that this is points, the division points, it's going to consider that this is an XY plane. If you want another plane, for example, XZ plane, if you don't want another plane, for example, XZ plane, you can simply just give it to the origin and then give it to the plane. You can see that those circles are going to go to the plane you have defined. Now, the main part is to play with the radius. So how can we play uh, with a radius. Uh, to use the graph mapper you can just type graph and you can find it here or you can go to the parms menu and uh, in the input I guess here you can find the graph mapper. Okay. To use the graph mapper we have to give an input to this and it usually has to be between 0 to 1. The reason is that the graph mapper default domain is 0 to 1. And if you reparameterize this curve, you can see that this is the parameter uh, of the points here. You can see it's like 0, 0 0.5 till 1. So that is going to give you the inputs of the graph mapper. Actually, the parameter is the location of those points on the line with a domain of 0 and 1. But just to emphasize that you have to have always, you just have to have a habit of right clicking on the curves and selecting reparameterize. So you be sure that the domain is from 0 to 1. So I'm going to just put that to reparameterize. 
and you can see that anyway it's not going to change but we are sure that it's between 0 and 1. Okay we can give that to the graph mapper right click and select a graph type right uh, let's just start with this um, maybe Gaussian okay it's a good distribution uh, if I give that to the radius you can see that okay if I give it to the radius you can see that there are circles we have circles with zero which is not going to show you anything so we have to just uh, give it a bigger radius you can see they are small so why not just multiply that from the math section this is going to be the scale from 1 to maybe 20 with two decimals so remember that that's the scale I'm going to change the name so you can know what's happening okay that's going to be the scale we're going to give that to the radius and increase the scale okay let's play with these handles so this is going to move this one play with this handle bring it a little bit here bring it a little bit up play with these handles and you can see how easy it is to play with these graph mapper and scale okay now we just have to connect them together with a surface so it's going to go to the surface and use this loft tool to connect those curves together and perhaps I have to turn on the shaded mode okay uh, we can turn everything off just to see that better I usually use the uh, display custom preview and uh, we can connect a material to give it a little bit of a shade uh, I usually use a swatch color swatch you can find it from the palms menu here in the input section and uh, let's just change the color usually I give the color black to the emission so I'm going to use that to give it a better view and from the shine 0 to 100 just increase that number so it just looks good okay that's the best way we can visualize uh, our surface now let's just play with these okay so now we can change the length we can change the count the count is going to give you just more uh, precision it's something like a resolution for this example uh, we can play with the multiple here we can play with the handle and you can see how easy it is to just produce different results it's beautiful and another good thing about graph mapper is that you can multiply that with another graph mapper so I'm going to just give that here and change it maybe to busier distribution we can just play with this see that the multiplication of these two graph mappers is going to also give you some output so let's just go to the parabola distribution and play with this that's really cool you can see that we can make such a thing with just two graph mappers that's really insane I didn't know that you can make that with combining two graph mappers but that's really cool and again maybe you just can multiply that with another graph mapper so you can see how cool this is and play with this part that's it and if you want to play with these circles maybe you just can go to the surface and use the pipe to give it a ring like thing maybe 0 0.2 give that to the radius and put it on the surface and maybe we can give that another color just for visualization so I'm going to give that back here and maybe another color yellowish thing okay so that was the tutorial of how you can use a simple graph mapper tool to produce a series of circles I hope that this tutorial is useful. You can also watch another one. We're going to put that at the end of the video, so be sure to check it out. And also, if you want to enroll in our course, we're going to put that playlist at the end. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.